Um, yeah, I'm gonna tell you why. Um, why Jesus uh, is God's son? Um, at least in terms of a Christian apologetic argument. I'm not really a believer in Abrahamic religions, but just uh, to make it more interesting, uh, I do have that background, so maybe I'm biased there. But um, but just to uh, use at least a apologetic argument, at least on that one. Um, so um, I'm gonna focus mostly on uh, this one, or this one to be specific. But yeah, um, basically, um, here is a here is I'm gonna read the whole quote here. Um, but Jesus remained silent and gave no answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? I am, said Jesus, and you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on the clouds of heaven. Clouds of heaven. So uh, uh, this is uh, where I'm getting apologetic. Um, because they were asking if he was the Messiah, which is uh, Christ in a sense. Uh, I mean, Christ is another form. It is another word of Messiah in a sense. So basically, Christ is in a sense uh, that um, at least what I heard. Um, and uh, and uh, here you have the son of. So that's uh, asking if he does, if he is the son of something, and then he says the blessed one. So then you can have like different words on it. You can either think that it's uh, maybe a human or maybe it's like, uh, you know, assuming if you don't believe it, then you can just assume that it's the mother or something. Um, but uh, if you go here, um, let's see. Uh, here's the, the blessed one, basically, the Greek original word for it. I'm going to just go through here just to prove that it's not the wrong word. Um, let's see here. Um, here you have the blessed one. I use the Greek, uh, the Greek uh, Bible text just to uh, compare in a sense. So here you have the blessed one. Uh, I don't know how to say it in Greek, but uh, it's the word at least. And now we can go to uh, this here. That's, yeah, should be right. So um, here is the original word for it. Uh, Elogetos or something. Um, so, um, adjective, iglotos, yologitos, uh, well spoken of, blessed, that's the definition of it. And the usage says here, used only of God, blessed, as entitled to receive blessing from man, worthy of praise. So the usage seemed to be, uh, uh, you know, uh, divine. So basically what he is saying here is the son of the blessed one, which is used only of God. So in terms of the definition of the word, we can kind of see that uh, it sort of means basically that he has uh, the divine uh, divination of a son. So in terms of that, I'm going to have to defend the Christian argument that uh, it kind of says what it says. Even if you are this, uh, uh, follow the scholarly view, which... Uh, scholars like um, uh, Richard um, Bart Ehrman, I think was, I think that was the name. He, he does say, though, that the, um, that the Gospels isn't reliable uh, testimony. For example, the letters by, by Paul is, uh, is more or less the reliable ones, which is authentic, uh, at least the one written letter. But, uh, but scholars do agree that they don't think the uh the gospels is reliable eyewitness testimony um in terms of a very critical view of it uh because um basically um jesus uh, christ he died in um 30 a.d and uh, the letters was in a sense um written i think uh 50 a.d i think so it was like 20 years after he died that uh, that paul in a sense um um, started evangelizing uh, Christians, and uh, and uh, it's the, it's mostly believed that Jesus was um, was the instrument of God, and that uh, he died for our sins, and that belief in him is the salvation to heaven, and that God and Jesus is the same thing in a sense. Um, uh, although uh, it's um, I guess uh, the Council of Nicaea argued that, uh, how that worked out in a sense, but. Uh, but essentially, uh, in I'm mainly talking about if you um, 
you know, you follow the the gospel tradition. At least this is not wrong. Is what I mean. Uh, so that's just all. Um, and also, um, I guess I can speak a little bit of Islam because um, just to clarify a little bit of that because they kind of don't uh, agree with the whole son of God thing. Uh, mainly the text, uh, in a sense, uh, think that it's a blasphemy or something. So, but I'm gonna. Uh, talk a little about how the um, the text works in terms of the Bible and the Islamic ones. In terms of the Bible, it kind of feels a little bit like you feel a little bit like a dictator in in a sense when you um, when you kind of uh, have that uh, mentality of the books uh, of the Bible and such. But Islamic ones, in terms of the Quran, uh, Hadith, and Tafsir, it kind of feels like it focuses on being dominated and dominance. Basically, you are supposed to feel dominated and also dominate. Like, that's what the Islamic text feels like in terms of uh, what you ought to feel like and what you should feel and do like, in a sense. But uh, but in terms of culture, um, um, I mainly, I don't really believe in Abrahamic religions, but I am more or less uh, pro-work culture in terms of uh, politicism and secularism, at least on a, a value-based uh, system that I am pro uh, I don't really follow devotion cultures that is about uh, uh, encourage people, encouraging people to not do anything, uh, like Catholicism and Sunni Islam. Like, that's devotion culture. So that's just, in terms of culture, I'm not fan of those. But yeah, I just want to say that. Um, uh, if you disagree, uh, feel free to share what you know. Um, but yeah, it's kind of interesting to look at it. Uh, thank you for listening and bye.